Close your eyes and watch your breath. The breath is the force of life. So it only makes sense that if the breath is comfortable, easeful, feels nourishing for the body, it's going to be good for your life, both for the life of the body and for the life of the mind. You create a sense of well-being in the body. It makes it easier for the mind to stay right here. When the mind stays here, then it can see itself, see what it's doing. You get a sense of why it's doing things. We go through life, we have intentions, but we're not very clear about them. And that's how life started. We wanted to be born. We couldn't stay in our old body, wherever it was. And we found an opening here, we found an opportunity, and we just went for it without really thinking about why, what our purpose was, what we had in mind. And aside that we just wanted to find some pleasure. And we find this pleasure, but there's also a lot of pain in life. And the question is, what kind of life is really worth the effort? This is where it's good to stop and think. On a birthday, on, a, on the New Year's Day. Where are you going? Where have you come from? And where do you plan to go? And what are your actions doing right now? Are they in line with your larger intentions, or are they going off someplace else? As I say, we're born into this world. We have some very vague intentions. We wonder if the world has a purpose for us, and they do have a purpose for us, but the question is, do you trust them, the people who have a purpose for you? Some people take compassion on you, and they really are thinking about your true best interests. Other people just want to use you. So you have to look around and see who's got your best interest in mind, and what they can teach you about working toward your own best interest. As the Buddha pointed out, the universe itself doesn't have any purpose. It just goes around and around. But beings can decide on their own purpose. It can be either skillful or not. And so he found the, skillful, the most skillful use of human life, which is to put an end to suffering. And he taught that to others. And that, op that opportunity to practice is still with us. The teachings are still with us. We have a monastery here where we can practice. Just stop and think about how you want to take the best advantage of this. Otherwise we go through life day after day after day. The, the body wears down. In the very beginning it, it develops. We're getting smarter and bigger and stronger. But then there comes a point where it turns around. So it starts going back in the other direction. And you begin to ask yourself, what do you have to show? Youth is gone. The health of youth is gone. What do you have to show for it, aside from your actions, the qualities you've developed and built into the mind? So what kind of qualities are you building? Are you building impatience? Are you building anger? Are you building greed, lust, fear? Or are you building good things, conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment? It's up to you. You have the choice. We've got this life. We've got this opportunity. Try to use it for a good purpose, because it's not always going to be with us. But the good we do will stay with us for a long time. So try to devote yourself to whatever form of goodness you can think of. Any place where you're lacking, try to make up for the lack. Any place where you're strong, try to make sure you stay strong. And that way even as life begins to wear down, as you get older, your health begins to fail, you'll still have something good to show for all the effort that went into taking birth and living. So it's a life well used.